Okay, the first thing we're going to go over is the Dix Hall Pike maneuver. Uh, it's really a test, Dix Hall Pike test, to confirm the diagnosis of BPPV. And what the heck is that? That's a condition where some degenerative material, they're, also, they're actually car calcium carbonate stones, little tiny ones, but they get out, they're made in the utricle, and they get loose in the semicircular canals. 85% of the time, it's the posterior canal, and they can, they can set off, they can stimulate parts of that canal that they're not supposed to, and that causes vertigo. And so, uh, first we need to diagnose that to see if that's the problem. And again, we use the Dix Hall Pike Maneuver. So let's say that he likes to, one of his complaints, he's in your office, he has vertigo right now, you know, it varies in intensity, but let's say he tends to fall toward the right, he'll be walking and he'll, he'll keep falling toward the right. That's, that means it's probably the right labyrinth that's the problem, or the right, one of the right canals. So we're gonna test that by having him turn his head to the right. Okay, that's going to line up the posterior canal uh, for the rest of the procedure. And then I've already ex warned him that this is going to really re-stimulate the symptoms. They're going to come back pretty strong. But Chris, that's the part of the, the way to get better. We have to diagnose this first. As soon as we make the diagnosis, we're going to try to fix this for you. So you hang in there, okay? So 45 degrees toward toward the side we think is the suspect, which is the right. And then we're going to bring him back quickly and we're going to watch him. So he's 45 degrees rotated, he's 30 degrees extended, and now something's going to happen after about 10 seconds. What, are you feeling something? Yeah. What are you feeling? The room's spinning. The room's spinning, okay, so the vertigo's back. But, so that's one of the diagnostic markers, but that's not all. So we carefully, I might have to pry his eye open because they like to shut their eyes. So I might have to hold his eye open and I can see nystagmus. His eye is bouncing up and down, it's flickering up and down. So that's one, another check for BPPV. And the other one is there's a, ro a torsional component on the downbeat. So the upbeat is straight up but the downbeat will twist. So that's characteristics of BPPV. And that's what we just saw, so we've made the diagnosis. Now, the third part of the diagnosis is well, there's a delayed onset, then you get the eye symptoms, and then after about 20 seconds, how do you feel? Better. Everything stops. The, the uh, nystagmus stops, and the, the room spinning stops, the symptomatology stops, so everything's good. So, this part the, of the test is over. So, let's set him back up. Now, to fix it, we're going to use the Epley's, the modified Epley's procedure. The first part of it is exactly the same as the Dix Hall Pike. So, uh, we know he's symptomatic on the right. I'm going to start him 45 degrees to the right. Okay, we're going to come back fast. Okay, that's going to uh, try to dislodge those stones from the, uh, the part of the canal, the posterior canal, where we don't want them to be. How do you feel? Dizziness coming? Yeah. Yep. So here comes the dizziness, just as predicted. The nystagmus is going. His eyes are bouncing. You know, we just wait it out. Uh, they say it's very rare for this to last more than a minute. And most of the time, it's about 15 to 20 seconds. So we're going to hold him in this position for, let's say, the, the phenomena occurred for uh, 20 seconds. We're going to hold him an extra 20 seconds after the, after the symptoms stop. Um, some doctors say that you should hold them for two minutes, which is probably a good idea, but I'm not going to do that right now. It's probably a good idea to hold them for, for two full minutes. Okay, so now we got all those stones and degenerative material. Uh, they are out 
of that uh, copula part of the tube, and they're now they're more toward the posterior part of the posterior tube. So the next part is we're going to try to move the stones again. I'm going to rotate his head uh, away from the affected side to 45 degrees. Here we go. Just like that. He's still extended, and just like before, about 10 seconds passes, what do you feel? Dizziness. The dizziness comes again. I look, his eyes, you know, I have to pry, and they want to shut their eyes. His eyes uh, got a nystagmus. It's beating upward, and it's got a torsional component to it. But after another 15 seconds, 20 seconds, how do you feel now? Much better. Much better. Okay, now I'm going to hold them in this position because now we've got the stones farther away, uh, but they're not to home base yet. The name of the game is to get the stones back to the utricle. Remember, that's where the stones are created in the utricle. So they got out of there. We need to get them back in there because he won't be symptomatic if we can do that. And so the next part, the very last part of the procedure is I'm going to hold his head like this, and I'm going to say, Chris, can you pretend you're rolling over in bed, uh, roll over on your left shoulder, and I'm going to hold his head, try not to move your head. This is probably the hardest part. A little bit farther. Okay. And after about 10 seconds, just let your head go. So we still want to keep that 30 degrees, and then we're going to rotate him all the way down, Okay, what ha what's happening? Are they coming back? It's back. Yep, here they go. It's back again. The stones are kind of dropping in to the utricle area right now. And then we wait a little bit. Now how do you feel now? Better. Okay. So hopefully we got the stones back where they belong in the utricle. Okay, now we're going to have them sit up. So Chris, I want you to bring your knees forward and your ankles forward and push with your right hand off the table. Let's get you seated. So knees forward. But hold, hold your head. Okay, so slide your knees forward, ankles forward, and up you go. Okay. How do you feel? Better. Okay. Now, there's uh, different, some people believe you should fly, have the patient flex their head for a little while. Uh, other, there's one YouTube emergency room doc says he really leaves them for 10 minutes. Doesn't just, you know, say, okay, you're, let them go. So I would go out of the room for 10 minutes, just let them stay. But I want you to stay seated, Chris. Don't lay down. So now I come back in 10 minutes, how are you feeling? Better. So good? So now you repeat, what test do you repeat? The Dix-Hall-Pike test. Let's test that right side again. Uh, and if the stones are back where they belong, uh, he, he'll breeze right through the test. He won't have any problems. Okay, well thank you very much, Chris, for helping us out. And good luck on your finals. And we'll probably make a few more. I'm definitely going to do the review for you. Uh, since we have a holiday next week, I'll do the review, make a screencast for that as well. Okay, bye-bye.